We welcome with us today Mark Tetzner, who is the CEO of Pamera Real Estate, uh, looking after the operations for the company in Florida, in the United States. Um, Mark, could you tell us a little bit about Pamera and could you tell us a little bit about investing in the Florida market? Pamera is essentially a um, premium partner for real estate owners and investors. We provide a full range of owner representation services um, by combining three owner-managed um, entities under one roof. Certainly here in Europe, American investors seem to have clearly picked up on the message that the German market is, is, is the solid market here in Europe at the moment. Germans also seem to have understood that there are markets in the United States which are offering value. What can you tell us about that? You have to um, look at New York differently as you have to look at, at Detroit or California compared to Florida or Arizona. There are pockets, however, in this current environment that show um, a, a tremendous interest from institutional investors at this point of time um, because at a certain point, even, even if there's a really distressed market, which we had for now five years, um, we, you see value at a certain point, usually which we believe is well below replacement costs. And some of these assets are being acquired at discounts to replacement costs that probably haven't been seen since the last cycle, down cycle, which ended up in the resolution trusts in the United States selling individual units like they do right now through FDIC in, in the United States. Right, because before the onset of the financial crisis, Europeans were starting to invest en masse in Florida. Uh, obviously, with the collapse of the, uh, of, of the property markets, people stepped back a little bit from the market. Is this happening again now? Right now, you see very smart capital within the United States. Um, a lot of institutional money has been placed, and you see a lot of Latin American investments. You see Canadian money coming into the market and you see Asian money and uh, probably Middle Eastern money right now coming in to the South Florida market, which is essentially and surprised us as well. At the, at the height of the market, we, almost, we had almost 45,000 unoccupied newly built condominium units in South Florida. By 2010, fourth quarter of 2010, um, 95% of all these new, newly built and unoccupied units have been sold, not technically to end users, but they have been sold to institutional investors because the distress of, of the owners, of the developer still continues because what's still lacking a little bit in this entire situation is the, the end buyer, the final buyer purchaser to actually occupy the unit, that is still lacking behind. Some of the units that you were able to see at prices of 800, 900,000 a unit were never worth actually that much. They might have reached 800, 900, maybe $1,000 per square foot. Reality is they're probably worth somewhere 250 to $300 per square foot. And um, now it depends on the size of the units, but a, a very, um, I would say a, a safe assumption is anything that uh, allows an American um, purchaser to buy something with a loan to value ratio of somewhere 70 to 80 percent is a good investment and these these assets are moving in, in certain criteria. So it sounds as if what you're suggesting is that the bottom of the market has been reached that we've actually uh, with, with, with investment coming from various other sources, we're seeing the bottom of the Florida market. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. And, and coming back to the foreclosure issue, I believe it is absolutely the point because what happens now, you have 96% or 95% of the market being actually sold to institutional investors. They have substantial business plans. They have adapted them to keep and hold their assets for probably at least three years, most likely five years in this market. So what they're doing is they're leasing them. All the ones that are being foreclosed on are finding space in these units. This is actually a great development already happening because you get people back in the city. You have to figure that some of these towers with four or 500 units were completely dark at night uh, some two, three years ago. Now they're renting them. Now you see lights, now you see people there, you see, you know, um, there's life. And, okay, and that's so insane. life is coming back. But from an investor's perspective, who should be investing in these properties? Who are you trying to um, uh, present these opportunities to? These are institutional investors, I take it? 
Right now, I see institutional investors being okay. the, dri the driving force behind the market recovery or the bottoming of the market. We all try to um, buy at the low point and sell at the high point. It's, it hardly ever happens. But this is a chance to be pretty close, in my opinion, to the bottom of the market. Mark, you're, you're, uh, you live in South Florida and obviously um, your focus for investment is in South Florida. How would you rate the state as a whole? Uh, would you do you see uh, opportunities throughout the center or in the north of the state, or are the principal um, opportunities in the south, Miami Beach, um, West Palm Beach, Fort Lauderdale? We have a very unique profile in in South Florida. It's it's a metropolitan area which combines three major cities: Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and and uh, West Palm Beach. Um, the combined population is 5.5 million out of 19 million in Florida. So. This is, this is the biggest piece, basically, of land um, development in, South, in Florida. And if you look at it from, um, from um, an overall perspective, there's hardly any land available. I think over 95% of the land has been built. And um, on, on one side, you have the Everglades. On the other side, you have the, the Atlantic. So there is no way other than if, if you have in-migration into that area, there is no other way as for prices to go, go up eventually. California is the state you marry, but Florida is the state with whom you retire. That's true. Um, I don't know whether the hardship being suffered by the snowbirds from up north is affecting um, the demand for property in, in, in South. From what one reads, certainly um, a lot of uh, the traditional snowbirds simply can't afford to come down any longer to Florida for their, uh, for their winter breaks. Absolutely. Um, there, there has been um, probably a large setback, um, but it, it basically has come back to, to, to prior levels. Um, you have to, to, to um, remember that a large portion of the snowbirds come from Canada. And Canada actually has one of the, the, the best economies right now, and especially also the real estate market apparently, um, that they have essentially money right now. They're coming down there, they're trying to scoop up almost everything they can find. They're, if you, if you go outside of Miami, which is still a very Latin American market, anything Fort Lauderdale North is, 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 is Canadian territory almost, you, right. you, especially between November and, and May. And right now, there is a, you will, if you will individually They're buy... They're swooping down to look for bargains. Absolutely. If you individually want to buy it, you will, see a lot, you will compete against a lot of Canadians. And eventually, the Mar North Americans will come back. New York has basically recovered completely from, from um, the crisis. So has Washington. So, you know, you have Chicago, you have Detroit. The, those are the, the states that are suffering. So there is a lot of um, um, bad news still coming out of those states. But we, will, we see recovery and we will, we will see an influx from these regions as well. So the demand from the healthier parts of the economy are actually helping to put a floor under the... The, the, the slide of the last few years. Absolutely. In Florida. Absolutely. Very interesting. Well, Mark, thank you very much indeed for talking with us. Um, good luck and um, all the best for Pamero. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Thank Appreciate you. It.